I am Marty Holcomb. Hi, so Marty. I have... <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ron McFarland. <laughs> and I'm George Ann Gowan. Hi, George Ann. <laughs> Hi, Ron. <laughs> uh, my name is Bruce Adams. Michael Wright. My name is Hal Orr. I'm Robert Damaris. Oh, I know him very well. <laughs> He's a cool guy. I like him. He's a really good guy. Nice guy. I knew him through music uh, and drama, and it was a pleasure every minute of the time. I would say I didn't know Seth particularly well when he was a student, but there was no mistaking his presence in the Kent News as one of their, maybe the principal cartoonist. And I vividly remember seeing him on stage, a production of Patience. And also he stole the show in Anything Goes. I um, met Seth, before he was born in Lamaze class mm -hmm. with yeah. Ron and uh, Seth's mother, Perry. And uh, he and my late son, Donnie, uh, played together from the time they could sit up and <laughs> went to nursery school together and elementary school together and Kent school together. And he has been a, a friend to our family for many years. I had an opportunity to work with Seth's mom uh, when I arrived here in 1987, which was a great joy, uh, terrific um, person to work with, and uh, and she she was also working as an administrator. I was also I was working as an assistant dean at the time, and that's how I had the opportunity to meet Seth. Well, I had the uh, interesting experience of knowing uh, Seth McFarlane as uh, as a student in my seventh and eighth grade social studies class. Uh, really brought out his creativity. Um, and wit, and I got to know him a little bit in an offbeat kind of way in sports, though he wasn't an athlete, and um, you know, as a person. Then I changed a lot of his diapers. <laughs> well, there's so many fond memories of Seth because he was he was a person of a lot of energy and was constantly buzzing around the campus and being creative and active in the arts community uh, and so forth. So I knew then that he was doing wonderful things and I only could imagine that wonderful things were going to happen for him as he moves along. I know Paper. he gets his voice from you and Perry because you both... We both but, sang, right? So, and Perry's and dad, too. He, he was a football coach, varsity football coach and a track coach. But in order to play on his football team, you also had to be in his chorus. Oh, for heaven's sake. Are you guy. serious? That's right. He said he, his, his first love was music. But that's where Seth, I think, got his musical. Yeah. Well, also from Perry and I, too. That's how Seth got started in music, oh, just, through Marty Holcomb oh, please. and her efforts. Here, here is the story. Um, we were trying to do a Gilbert and Sullivan, and, uh, and a, a group of us, and we had this wonderful director, who had all, uh, Maria Gilsonen, who oh, yeah. had already oh. done things at Kent Center School. Anyway, um, we had a group of maybe fourth graders through eighth graders. It was like, you know, that was, that was our, our, our limit, and, and so we had auditions, and just before the auditions, um, Perry McFarlane called me and said, by this time I knew, knew everybody, and she said, um, I, I'm so sorry to bother you, but Seth uh, would love to audition. I'm so sorry, I hope it's not a problem. And I said, oh, why not? You know, sure, fine. And he's how old at this time? He was a fourth grader. And we had a bunch of eighth graders, and we were expecting the eighth graders to be the stars mm -hmm. of the show. <laughs> he auditioned, and Maria Gilsonen looked at me and she said, he's, he's the one. He, uh, he's, he's so young. I mean, how old are you in fourth grade? Nine. He was yeah. nine. Yes. And he was the star 
and he was incredible. Brilliant. Happened to see a performance of Seth and some of the cast members from Family Guy in one of the halls in Carnegie Hall. And it was basically a, it was a live variety show. And I have to say that that's probably the best live performance I've ever seen in my life. It was fantastic. Just so thrilled that Seth continued with his music. Did he do stand-up comedy when he was at RISD? He did, yep. And I think he, he placed like third or fourth in the state. Something wow. like that. Really? Right. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he really wanted to really wanted to uh, to go into stand up. We had at Kent Center School at the time an intramural basketball program and I think most people would say that at least that at that point in Seth's life, he didn't have an athletic bone in his body. But he signed up to play on intramurals. Anybody could play, male or female. And I coached one of the teams. And coincidentally, I got Seth on my team, along with his best friend, uh, Ken Dooley, who I nicknamed Kareem Abdooley after the former basketball player. But he and Seth would sit on the bench most of the time because they were so awful as basketball players. They'd sit on the bench next to me, cracking jokes and making fun of people the whole game. It was just hysterical. I wish I'd had a recording. Our son was in the same, this nursery school, which is what we called it oh, in those days. That's right, yeah. And um, after a, a few times of visiting the school, I saw these incredible cartoons in one of the rooms. I said, I thought, someone's father must be a cartoonist <laughs> and he visited the class and he made these pictures and then I was told that the that the pictures were done by one of the children and um, in fact they were done the year before so they he did that when he was three years old he made these cartoons well when he started drawing as a baby basically <laughs> yeah and that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I saw basically. it. Basically, yeah. and you know, we we watched cartoons on Saturday mornings or whenever they were on, and also the the the, the PBS TV shows, um, Sesame Street, and mm -hmm. whatever else was on at the time. Um, he, I, we noticed or soon that he could maneuver a pencil. Mm -hmm. on and he a really could too. Right. Boy. So we just made sure that he had all the pens and paper that he needed mm -hmm. and and he would watch something and, and then he'd reproduce it on paper. When he was at Kent he did caricatures of a lot of faculty. He was so good at it. He really? was really good at capturing the likeness in a little cartoon. Yeah, he was really good at that. It, uh, outstanding. I think that mm -hmm. I think he honed his skills on the sidewalks mm -hmm. of yeah. Kent when he when he made money doing those car and that caricatures. Was, yes, and he yeah. would, when he was a little kid. I mean, well, what would, would we say, twelve or something? Yeah, twelve. Like right. He had the wherewithal to sit out on Main Street in with a little card table or something, and I think he did uh -huh. it for like five bucks or maybe yeah, maybe it was fifty $5. cents. Uh, five bucks. Five dollars. And yeah. you could get a really good cartoon of yourself. Yeah, it was amazing. I remember when they would get together occasionally, Donnie and Seth, and maybe it would be a group, I think maybe Matt Litwin, would he have been in the same group? Yeah, he would. But been, the, the, the neighborhood been, yeah. kids would get together, mm -hmm. Josh and all. Yeah. And all the other kids would like hold, like pick up a pencil and sort of stab and drag. Yeah. Yeah. And Seth was doing these perfect circles with the features inside the the, the uh, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the other kids yeah. would have an eye over here and an eye over there. But he was, you were right, he was, there was some, he had something up here in, in his head and in his eyes way before he should have. Way before, it was just amazing. I have some car a caricature that he did of me, very creative, as one might expect. I have a cartoon that he did of me as a social studies teacher with uh, former Russian leader Lenin in the, uh, in the cartoon. Um, and I have a cartoon of uh, 
One of his original cartoons he had a lot of people don't remember, but he, he long before he came here to school and long before I had him as a student, he produced a, a weekly cartoon for the local newspaper. And I got a copy of that. So so that's something that I, that I still have and, and once in a while look at. Yeah, there's another one um, of a woman, <laughs> of a woman uh, uh, looking at a lineup. And, she, and Walter Crouton is standing behind her, just in the in the frame, you know. And the, and the, the officer, the police officer, who's asking the woman, or I'm not sure who it was, said, "Now, can you pick the person out of this lineup uh, <clears throat> who physically abused you?" And everyone in the lineup is a cop. <laughs> He's a good kid, but he's just, sometimes he could be a pain. I hope I have this right. It caused quite an uproar, but he had a cartoon in the Kent News with two students going up to the altar rail for communion, and one of them asking, could he have fries with that? And that caused quite a stir. <laughs> he got his first hate mail in town. Oh, oh shit, that's so sad. That's so sad. <laughs> Seth had so many great influences from from the town of Kent and also from Kent School. Yes. Jay yeah. Kobler, he loved working with, and Tim Scott, his English teacher. Yeah. Um, and who was the art teacher? I can't. Claude Sosie. Claude George Sosie. Yeah. And George Canals too. Uh -huh. Claude and Sosie. they enjoyed his talent yes. in art. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, you were one, one of them. Holy mackerel. Big, big, big mm -hmm. part. Yep. In, you don't give in, yourself enough credit. You don't, really. You are such an important part in all our lives. It's this community. It, it isn't just us. We live in a great place, don't we? We, we I do. Mean, we, what a great place to raise kids. I remember kids. Seth saying that on an interview. It it's, was, this, it, this whole town raised Seth and everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he just happened to make it out and make it It was it a big, magical place, really. Because, really. Uh -huh. And I think it still is in many ways. You know, having been away, for 20 odd years and coming back here to rebuild the timber frame has really, and I've, you know, I've met people that have stayed here during that 20 year hiatus from Kent and I'm amazed at how wonderful everybody still is. Oh, How I, caring, well, how kind, how good this town I, is. Never met a single person who, had a negative thing to say about Seth. He just, he's, he's just so kind and so yep. big yep. hearted. And he does even his philanthropic work, he, he does so quietly. After, I think I was retired as a teacher, uh, I got a call from a former student who uh, was then living in town, I think still is, a, a local contractor who had the idea to start to build a, an outdoor basketball court at Kent Center School over there, and uh, that's the public school here in Kent for those of you, those that might not know that. Um, and uh, would I would I help? And so I said, sure, I'd be happy to. And they were going to build it and name it the uh, the Don Gowan Court. And uh, any alums watching this will know who Don Gowan is right away. But for those who might not be, he was a former student here and teacher and coach and dean of students who died way too young, um, but much beloved by, by everyone. And so the court was named the Don Gowan Court. And um, we were looking to raise money and I contacted Seth. And Seth stepped up to the plate and made that happen. But he doesn't, it, it was, it's never the Seth Memorial Mm -mm. Playground. No, no, he would it's never want that. It's not the set. That. It's always in somebody else's name. It's a beautiful basketball court with everything that you could want in a, in a basketball court and more. And uh, it's it's thanks to a huge extent to, to Seth. When I went out to Ron and Chiang's wedding, um, Seth was, you know, big star then, <laughs> and I knew he would kind of remember me, but I didn't really expect him. To oh, he remembers everybody from, from Kent. But it, it was yeah. lovely, and he, 
pulled me aside, and here's this man, I think probably at that point he had a private jet or something to scoot around in. Yeah. <laughs> and he was a big wig, and he pulled me, it was after my husband and my son had both died, and my son and Seth had been classmates since birth. I mean, they were, yeah, <laughs> were nursery right. mates almost. Yeah, exactly. And he pulled me aside and said, I, it was the first time I'd seen him since I'd lost Don and Don. Uh -huh. And he said to me, I want you, I want you to know that I aspired to be the men that your husband and son were. And here was this man that was so successful, pulling aside somebody from little Kent, Connecticut, and saying that about my, it was just such a genuine kindness. He didn't have to do it. He could have just said, hey, George Ann, it's good to see you. How are you? Mm -hmm. But he, it was, that's again, pure Seth. He's mm -hmm. just, he does yep. good things. I'm so proud to have once been his teacher, once been his friend, uh, to have kept in touch with him uh, over these years. And I gotta say, whenever, whenever I mention in a conversation, just offhandedly sometime, or just when I'm trying to one-up somebody else, you know, I, I once taught Seth MacFarlane because everybody knows, everybody under the age of 50 knows who Seth MacFarlane is. And you taught Seth McFarland. I said, I didn't teach him anything that probably helping him in his present situation, but I'm very proud to have, have taught him and, and know him. I'm speechless, but I'm so glad I, I was, I, I'm so glad I knew him and have wonderful memories and look forward to all the things he's doing now yes. that I need to get caught up on. Yeah. <laughs> well, certainly, obviously, it's great to see him being inducted. And um, he has done so many wonderful things that I've had opportunity to witness um, beyond Kent um, that, as I said, I could have only imagined that was going to happen. I'm so grateful and, and to have got had a chance to meet him. And I'm really thrilled that, um, that he's doing the things he's doing and helping out so many people. Um, it's a blessing in those regards. And I'm very, very happy for his family uh, as well because it's well-deserved and well-deserved for him as well. And uh, obviously, other than getting the chance to see him on, do his wonderful thing on television, uh, it'll be a great joy to, at some point, get to California and have a chance to see him again and his family. I guess what I would like to say to Seth after all these years is congratulations on your numerous accomplishments and accolades and I think it's only fitting that you're ending up in the Father Sill society because that's reserved for alumni who've made a really significant contribution in this world upon their graduation from Kent. So congratulations, best wishes. Well, I can just say I can't think of anybody more deserving. And uh, I like Seth since I met him in Charlotte Hungerford Hospital on October 30th, 1973. That's why I met him. 29th, yes. Right. You met him on the 26th. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, okay. I met him on the 29th. And I'm so happy. I'm, just, I'm so happy for him. This is so well deserved. And uh, I'd also just like to thank him for his generosity to my family and to the Kent family over the years. Uh, all I can say is thank you for being who you are. Aww. Thank you for being who you are and making, making me proud of every breath I take. Aww. I love it.